Great. Well, then I think we can probably start uh, start going. We have a few slides to just share with you guys a bit more uh, about what we're talking about today. And, and yeah, so we can hop right into it. So first up, we're just going to do a brief overview of who Planetara is, our model, the way we, we do what we do through our global community tourism network. Um, we'll introduce our amazing community partners and panelists that we're talking with today. And then at the very end, we'll share a bit about ways that you guys can support Planetara in the upcoming weeks or years if you want. And we can do a Q&A about our panelists. Please feel free, there's a Q&A box uh, to share, to put any questions you want throughout the, throughout the panel and we can answer them at the end. So as for, for who is Planetara, I'm sure many of many of you joining us today might already know, but as the leading nonprofit using tourism to uplift communities, it is our mission to connect our partners around the world to the benefits of tourism. We know that by supporting and championing community tourism, we can achieve our goal of breaking down barriers for local enterprises to harness the power of travel as a force for good, whether they're using their community tourism enterprise to directly benefit women's empowerment, cultural celebra celebration, environmental protection, or creating new paths for youth. We are passionate about supporting our community partners in changing lives through travel. So, hello everyone, I'm Selene and I'm going to continue and talk a bit about our model. So, uh, Planetera starts by identifying communities and we just look for organizations who want to use the power of tourism for good. And we support them to trainings and grants uh, we also provide support by connecting them to the market to make their business sustainable. And uh, another thing we do is we mentor to network. And this is where, um, so let me go to the next slide, where our global community tourism network comes to life. And thanks to the support of our donors, we've been able to create this space where Planetera can provide communities from all over the world with the tools they need to, to thrive in the tourism industry. So uh, within the Global Community Tourism Network, we do several activities. One of them uh, is that we provide access to, to training. We have a learning hub and in this learning hub, we have contents from different subjects that communities really need to have a tourism business like marketing and I don't know uh, how to create your like a sheet for a checklist for everything that you need to have prepared to host guests, guests etc and well you have downloadable sheets and all resources are available in English, Spanish and well Vietnamese and Bahasa. So uh, we're happy to, to announce that we're soon shifting to a new learning uh, platform to make it more easy, more engaging for, for our communities to, to learn. And it would also allow us to, to know and in real, like to have real-time information into uh, what ways we can support them better. And also uh, we can have a closer contact with them. So we're really excited about that and you will hear about it hopefully soon. So um, another thing we work uh, in the Global Community Tourism Network is we create spaces for communities to, to connect and to communicate, you know, to have a space where they can exchange uh, with their peers, they can share the ideas and learn from each other. And we have different initiatives. One of them is, well, webinars like this one. Uh, most of them are, for the Global Community Tourism Network members, but in occasions like this one, uh, we open it to a broader audience. We also have uh, community hours where it's it's a space where communities can uh, connect with the Planetara team and they can share ideas and just learn from each other. And we also have the, the Facebook group and WhatsApp groups in, in every region or communication through WhatsApp uh, that is also really useful to, to create connections. 
And well, uh, more opportunities in the network. Uh, we also have the Global Community Tourism Fund. And it's a fund uh, where we provide small grants and men mentorship to community tourism enterprises. And we help them uh, to accelerate growth and to, to improve their existing experiences or to develop new ones. Uh, so this is also an exciting opportunity for our members. And sorry, I already talked about that. And we're so happy that we've reached 450 plus communities uh, all over the world in, well, 77 different countries. So that uh, makes us super happy and looking forward to, to the future as well. And we're looking to, to reach more communities. So now I'm going to, to introduce our inspiring community partners that are joining us today. So I'm going to try my best to, to explain your work. So I'm just going to do it in, in three lines. So I'm, I'm sure uh, you can talk more in depth about it when, when we go through the, the panel discussion. So we have uh, Red Rocks Intercultural Exchange Center, and they're from Rwanda. They're a social enterprise that promotes sustainable tourism through community and cultural programs. And they bring underserved communities into the tourism supply chain and support community development projects through their initiatives in cultural heritage, conservation, and arts. They also provide accommodation to host visiting uh, travelers. So we're happy that Greg uh, Basunji, the CEO and founder, is here with us. So thank you, Greg, for joining us. And now I'm happy to introduce to the COF Collective. Uh, they're from Malawi and they're a social enterprise with a mission to use the, the money from tourism to support community initiatives. And they believe in fostering sustainable solutions through building relationships, uh, working and learning together. And a few of their development projects include road construction, water solutions, as well as community grants to young single mothers. And we're happy to be joined here by Tamra Carlson. So thank you so much, Tamra, for joining us today. And now I give the floor to Evie, our regional program manager in Africa, Middle East, and Europe, who will be uh, leading the panel discussion. So floor is yours, Evie. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm so excited. Um, to be leading the panel discussion today with our amazing community partners, uh, Tamara and Greg. And it's so exciting. It's been such a great year. Um, and I'm so excited for everybody to hear all this fun stuff and all the uh, impactful work that our community partners have been uh, doing through the support of our donor network as well. And I think the first question that I have is, is for Greg, you know, Greg, we know that your location in Rwanda is one that is so full of cultural and indigenous um, importance. So I'd love to know what was the motivation for you and for your community to bring culture and your personal experiences into tourism? Uh, thanks very much, Eve, and thanks very much, everybody that is listening to us this evening, as, as I hope it's in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I have really uh, has brought me into, motivated me to engage into the community, uh, the culture experience, community-based tourism, was how we were seeing this tourist coming in. But these tourists were nearly coming in not to engage with the community, but Papa said to go and see the primates, see the wildlife, but they just go home without meeting the local communities. And then I said, okay, what can we do now so that I can get these people to even interact with the local communities? That's how I came up with an idea of setting up uh, Red Rocks as a cultural exchange center. And after setting it, my, uh, the whole idea of this was to see how can I train the local communities to engage in the tourism industry that was growing uh, up in our area? And how can these local communities benefit financially from 
the people that are coming in and you know, if they are coming in and they are paying let's say 1500 700 dollars how can they leave 10 dollars five dollars to the community that did that so after seeing all the travelers we also wanted to offer the travelers some something more than uh, the adventure that uh, they are doing inside the protected areas but they do really do it outside of the uh, the pro uh, outside of the protected areas which is within the community so travelers to experience the local way of life living that was the whole idea why i set up uh, i was motivated to engage in the community-based tourism Thank amazing you. wow thank you so much greg and i mean just from hearing you talk it means it shows that you know, now that travelers are coming into your community, I'd love to know, have you seen any positive impacts from bringing in more travelers to come and experience your culture and experience your way of life? I have already seen this. I have seen the, the positive changes that come to the community uh, as a result of the tourism. Uh, we have had the increased standards of living. The communities have increased. They have come up to talk. They, they even they used to know, like in Rwanda, we speak like one language. Whereas you find like in other neighboring countries, so they speak like four or five languages, uh, 350 different languages. But in our country, we do speak one language. And with this one language, everybody was really like, how can I speak a different language? How am I going to speak Spanish? How am I going to speak English? But interacting, bringing tourists within the community, it has changed their way of thinking. It has taken the shy part beyond them. And all this, uh, it has also, in terms of the social economy, the cultural impact. On social cultural impact, our community's interaction between people with different cultural backgrounds. It has opened up their mind by saying, oh, I met a guy from uh, Netherlands. I have met a person who comes from Australia. So this kind of, and they haven't got a chance to travel, but they travel through the mind, they travel through interacting with the local communities. And this is something that when we travel, what do we need? We want to test their food. We want to hear the stories from the communities. And this is where we get the real um community interaction the attitude behavior and the relationship to the material of goods and sometimes they see the new phone they say what kind of phone is this what how do you use how do you use the google map to identify where we live even though we don't have all these uh, numbers of our houses they are not numbered sometimes we have our roads doesn't have the map so all the numbers but they still want to know how is the Google map being used? How can they identify man? So it's a kind of like uh, the interaction, the changes has not come only in terms of the financial, but also through the mindset. Amazing. Wow. Thank you so much for that, Greg. Um, you're making me want to visit you so, yes. so much. I can't wait. Um, yeah. And I think my, uh, my next question is for you, Tamara. You know, we've seen the collective, the Cove Collective, you're a champion in rallying the community around you to engage in tourism activities or to actively benefit from tourism. Do you have any examples of how the community you're working with has benefited through tourism in your village? Yeah, sure. And thank you guys so much for having me. I'm honored to be here with you guys today. Um, yeah, so we're building an eco lodge just as a little bit of a background, um, and we're still under construction. So um, a lot of what we've been doing in the community, we've been now in the community for about four years, um, though we're still building, you know, COVID happened, setbacks, slowdowns, all of those things. But we've already been working and engaging with the community on the things that are really important to them. So something that's been really important to them is around infrastructure. So we, um, where our village is located, we're only about four or five kilometers off sort of like the main road where the grid's at. Um, but our road is really bad. And so the community um, has really been actively trying to improve the road so that they can then improve the school and 
eventually bring water and power. So we've been looking at sort of like a lot of infrastructure challenges that the community has been facing um, and working together with them. And so far we've managed to build a bridge, um, which has opened a lot of doors already. We need a few more, um, but we, we we kind of addressed the worst spot. And because of that, the community was able to get a borehole at the school, which is the first ever improved water source in our area. So that was a big deal. Um, and then we're actually, because of that bridge, we're now having another NGO is building a clinic, a health clinic in our area, which is fantastic um, because we have a lot of community members that are taking, you know, boats to get, you know, to health services during rainy season when we can't access the road. And so this is a big, exciting deal. Um, and then we're also, um, thanks to Planetera, we've also been working on um, making another improved water source um, by the lodge itself. And it's it's a little bit further down the road from where the school improved water is at. Um, so we want to be able to bring, um, you know, improved water to that part of our community and as well as the lodge as well. So it'll be the first of its kind, um, solar powered, of course. So yeah, so we, you know, we're doing doing a lot of little things. They're not little actually, you know, infrastructure is kind of a big thing to tackle, but um, that's really where the community wants to focus right now. And it, it it's like the first step to getting, you know, a lot of other development in the area. Amazing, thanks for that Tamara. I'd have to disagree with you when you say you're doing little things, you know, <laughs> just by introducing tourism in your area, yeah. you know, there's so much that, you know, we can hear you and the passion in your voice saying, oh, now there's a clinic that is coming, there's a road, um, which are things we don't think about often when we travel, but thank you so much for all your hard work and, you know, yeah. letting the community lead in what they need. Um, Absolutely. My next, yeah. Awesome. My next question is for you, Greg. Um, we know that you know you've got you've got a lot of work that involves training and community support, particularly with the youth. You know, and you continue to create unique and memorable tourism experiences. Can you share what resources that you need to create a tourism experience that uh, can benefit the community? Uh, uh, I think uh, one of the uh, the thing that I have already seen in the community-based tourism uh, is the visibility. Because what we are, what we are saying, we are showing the culture, we are showing the experiences, and this is something that we can't modify or do everything. It only needs the visibility. It needs the network. It needs to be in the global network, like the Planetera. If you are putting us on the world map and people get to know, does Red Rocks Initiative exist? Yes, it exists. That's what we need. So we need to be into that network. We need to be getting together. We need to meet up in some shows, trade fairs and everything and show who we are. If we meet people from Malawi, we meet other people from uh, uh, South America. And I have to say, you have put us together as a global network that are focusing into this. Even though we still meet different challenges, you know, but slowly by slowly we can overcome that as we are now in a, a bigger network. So visibility and putting us on the wide map, that's the most important thing. Who would have known that we exist in Rwanda? where we speak one language, if Planetella wasn't there to say, hey, here we are, here is Red Rocks. So that's all what we need to do. How would I have known that there is somebody else who is doing a community-based tourism in Malawi if you were not there? So those are all things that we, as members of the Planetella, people who are passionate about this, should be proud of and should keep on. We want more of this kind of visibility. Thank you. Wow, amazing. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, it's, it's so nice and thank you for the kind words as well. Um, as Selena mentioned, one of the key things that we aim for in Planetera is to market and promote community partners. We recognize there is a barrier between mainstream tourism and such amazing and authentic experiences that our community partners all over the world experience and share. 
So a lot, large part of our work through the network is to show that visibility. Um, my next question is for you, Tamara. You know, you, you've previously mentioned that you are still in the process of developing the Eco Lodge. So you're still in the process of developing your tourism experience. Can you share, you know, the biggest challenges that you've seen in creating this tourism experience, as well as attracting travelers um, to know that this is something that is coming, this is something that is happening. Sure, yeah. Um, I think for us, one of the biggest challenges um, is the, kind of the pace at which the building process and everything's kind of happening. Um, you know, we're doing natural building, so we are trying some experimental things and deliberately like the pace is slow because I think when you're learning an environment, learning a culture, learning a community, it takes time to really understand all of the, you know, the ins and outs and how everything fits together. And so from the beginning, that's always been sort of like our methodology is to really just understand our environment and everything that goes into it. So it means the pace is a little bit slow, you know, we're training builders, we're, you know, we're experimenting with building with mud and trying to figure out what resources are locally available. And um, because of the pace and, and the slowness of kind of how everything transpires, it means we haven't been able to start generating the income that we kind of wanted to um, from the beginning. And so, you know, coupled with the infrastructure challenges we've had, you know, lack of funding has also been a little bit of a challenge is like, how do we how do we really get people interested in what we're doing to get the money we need to kind of really sustainably address these infrastructure challenges like the road, for example, the community will fix it year after year, but you know, my thought has always been like, I don't want that to be the case, you know, it's a lot of work. It's hard, you know, and every rainy season, the road gets washed out. So like, how can we address this in a more sustainable way um, so that we're not facing this year after year, which also affects tourism, you know, and the ability for travelers to come. And so, you know, we're kind of looking at it in that holistic approach of like, how do we, you know, create an environmental program, for example, to help address the road situation, and, you know, so we're, it just takes time, uh, time and money. And so, we're, we're trudging along and we're, you know, we're tackling things, but it's just, and I think along with that, keeping the community engaged and motivated and, you know, it's hard when you don't see things happening quickly of like, you know, to keep that excitement and that, you know, I think in most of Africa, you know, Greg says slowly, slowly, but slowly, slowly, but surely, you know, like that's the mentality. And so I think me as a foreigner, I tend as an American to want things to happen quickly. So it's probably more just in my head of like my personal challenge of like, um, because I think people are used to it where we're from, you know, where we're working. It's like, yeah, things happen slowly. And as long as we're making forward progress, that's, you know, that's okay. So um, as far as marketing goes, um, actually we've, we've kind of been having a better, you know, better luck marketing um, ourselves, like, I don't know if it's like, there's just really a need for tourism in the North part of Malawi where we're at. Um, the place that we're building is beautiful. And so we've had people come out. And in fact, even local people, you know, there's really a need for, people are begging like, when are you gonna open? When are you gonna open, you know? And so I think it's, it's great. It's a unique place to be, you know? Um, so I think also Planetaire has helped a lot with that. Um, just getting that exposure on social media and having people see what we're doing. And there's an excitement that's building around in the community nearby with, with actually a lot of Malawian tours, which is fantastic. Um, so yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> I mean, from coming from talking about the challenges that you face, I'm going to pose a question to to both of you. And, you know, with Tamara first, we all coming out of, you know, an earth shaking event, you know, COVID, nobody experienced it. Um, and it imp impacted the whole globe, especially the tourism industry. It would be very interesting to hear from you on uh, on the community perspective. What were the impacts? of the pandemic and what are you continuing to see as we come out of the pandemic? Sure, um, you know, honestly, where we were at in rural Malawi um, and with the lodge not yet being open, I think the biggest impact was, was just really like, you know, we weren't able to keep building mostly because I had to leave the country um, to be back with my son in the States. But, um, 
you know, some jobs were lost, but we actually, we actually managed to construct our bridge during COVID. Um, so I don't know, like we actually got some things accomplished. And I think in rural Malawi, I don't know how it is in Rwanda. I'm curious to hear from Greg, um, plus you were already running, but it wasn't really impacting us. And, you know, like I think I in Zambia as well, but it wasn't like coming from the States where people are really getting sick. Lots of people were dying. We didn't have that in Malawi. So in a way, kind of things were just going on as normal, which is fantastic. You know, um, we were suffering a lot of the economic hardships more so than the health related hardships, I think, in Malawi of, you know, the cost of goods increasing. Um, and we're still we're still really struggling with that. Um, I think the whole world. But um, so I think, yeah, we're, we're sort of just reeling from that right now in Malawi. Thank you, um, Greg. I'd love to hear from you um, how how the community uh, was impacted from the pandemic. Uh, yeah, um, the communities where the pandemic was really it's something that came um, unexpected. It wasn't to travel as businesses. Let's say, for example, we used to get people coming in, but there was no movement. So. Most of the time we are like in lockdown, so we couldn't even there was no movement, nothing. So this also impacted the movement of the people, and uh, the results restricted the movement of people. Consequences puts their allies on the communities into their losses, so it was driving them into their losses. But we didn't really wait from there. We kept on really close to them, like giving them hope, saying. This is something that is going to end and it's going to be all right. But there was, because uh, there were no clients, uh, no tourists who were moving, there were no even some locals who were moving. So they had all their products ready to start, like, you know, getting into the, the tourism industry. But it was, uh, it was a big effect. But, but at the end, we kept, you know, being up in the, in the village, you know, the most of them started engaging into like a smaller farming, raising up like some smaller animals around their families. So, which was really good, but it was uh, it affected really uh, many local communities, and others tried really to kind of uh, give up from uh, being in a community based towards. But now they are coming back. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for that. Um, a, a question to both of you, you know, um, you're both so engaged in the Global Community Tourism Network. Whenever there's a community hour or webinar, you know, we see your names pop up when there's something going on. You're very engaged in the learning and mentorship as well as the support activities. I'd love to hear from both of you, starting with Greg. Um, just some key learnings that you have come out with over the last year from being a member of the network. So do you have any key learnings that you have come up uh, with uh, that you have used from the Global Community Tourism Network, from Planetera, that have been successful in your enterprises? Uh, I think one of the, one of the things that uh, I have really learned uh, from being a part of this uh, this is from all the members that I see here. Whenever I talk to them, whenever I talk to other people from different countries, I get to learn that there is still a shortage of action in the community-based tourism. You may ask how. Uh, uh, done leadership. Where does that come from? It says uh, it's like many people, they talk, about like the community-based tourism, but when it comes to act on the ground, you don't really see the results there. You don't see what is going on. And uh, this is something that I have learned from there. And uh, we have been, I have been like talking to some of our community members saying, let's take this, let's hold this community-based tourism as our own product. Let's see how can we benefit from that and let's try also to bring more product and learning uh, more that we could be using or benefiting from, uh, from it. So the more product that we have, the better for us. 
we are now engaging our communities in like what uh, in they are doing in Malawi about like uh, building such a, a lodge like that. But ours is like, how can these communities, even though they have been like making, engaging in like making baskets, demonstrating the culture and other community projects, how can they also become um, into like housekeepers? How can they become chefs? So I have learned from the global community tourism network that the more product you have in our community, the more you engage into the community, the more passion you have with uh, your community and you develop the leadership in the smaller groups, this is going to lead us to a success. That's something that I have learned from that. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Greg. Um, I must say, I do love the, the sort of the diversification part of our learning hub that promotes and uh, you know tries to encourage our community partners as much as possible to look at different avenues of business and how to diversify the experiences that they offer. I'd love to hear from you, Tamara, as well. Um, if there's anything you know specific that you can say you've you've learned from the Global Community Tourism Network that has stayed with you over the last year. Yeah, absolutely. It's been incredible to be a part of Planetara. Um, when we first came on and we first learned about Planetara, one of the things that I really appreciated um, and that really helped our organization was a lot of those, um, some of those initial things we had to do to become a partner, but also the learning hub, like, for example, about keeping children safe, you know, um, of course, that's something we had in the back of our mind, but making making that structure part of our organization, you know, like being a small grassroots organization, we were so focused on all the little day-to-day, -day, you know, building related things, community related things. Planetara has been great because it gives you this place where you can sort of implement the structure. If you need help building a financial plan or, you know, a lot of those different things, like even about having something about keeping children safe and thinking about how do we promote that with our with our visitors, you know, because that's something, you know, that's really important and we needed to address, you know, we needed to have a structure, a system for, I like structure, I like that kind of thing. Um, so that's been really helpful, you know, building that intentionality into how we structure our organization. So, um, and then on, on kind of like a more personal level, um, Planetara, like when we found out about you, it's really helped me build my confidence in, our venture and what we're doing because my background is is from development and kind of like a bigger large scale aid you know and we've applied for a lot of grants you know we, we've been trying to get some funding and from that avenue and people really they stress this whole scalability they want you know they want to know what this large scale impact you're making how many hundreds of thousands of people can you impact and i've always really believed in the power of community and and more of the small scale impact with you know the trickle down effect of like really focused attention on one area and that's what i love about community tourism is it addresses our unique community you know it builds our capacity to work together it builds resiliency and it really helps foster that lasting change. You know, we have the flexibility to work on the road right now and then the school later, and then, you know, whatever it is that the community is facing at that moment, we have the ability to really help them and or help each other, you know? And so that's a long-term impact. That's, a, that's something that like, I don't think you can always like tag a number to, you know, like maybe we focus on education now and then in the future, those kids come back and they're doing X, Y, and Z. You don't know that kind of impact necessarily. Um, so it's been really awesome for me personally to see an organization like Planetara that sees the value in these organizations, these more grassroots organizations that are addressing these large problems at a community level, um, because I think at the end of the day, that's really valuable long-term impact. So um, yeah, I just, I really appreciate what you guys are doing for, you know, people like Greg and I who are out there in our communities, like really trying to make lasting change. Um, so thank you. Oh, thank you so much. That was so kind. Um, thank you very much, Tamara. Um, yeah, so moving on, my next question is for you, Greg. Um, you know, I, I was excited to share with my team members here, Julia and Selena, that every year Red Rocks has a cultural festival, which, you know, I watch from the sidelines because I couldn't travel this year. Um, but your cultural festival is something of 
a big show that actually showcases your culture. It's run by your community. It shows the culture. It shows the authenticity and it shares the stories. And, you know, us at Planetera, we're always happy to, to support communities like you, especially if we're bringing young people forward and showing out their skills. Um, and I wanted to ask if you can share with our audience today just a little bit more about how earlier this year through the Global Community Tourism Fund, Planetera supported Red Rock and how that um, has translated through your cultural festival as well through the success of Red Rocks as a whole. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes, we do really learn. Um, this is one of our biggest events that we learn under Red Rocks. We learn the cultural festival. It's something that always happens. As I have told you, we got the idea from the tourism people, the tourists that we are coming into Rwanda. I got the idea when the Rwanda Development Board came up with an event of naming the baby gorillas in Rwanda. That was like 20 years back. So what I did, I thought they were coming in in our city and when they come in in our city, they come in like a half day. So after half day, they go and name the baby gorillas, they are gone. And I said, okay, why can't I set up something that is going to go on for the whole week? That's how I came up with uh, the Red Rocks Cultural Festival. And this Red Rocks Cultural Festival this year, we celebrated the Red 10 year, 10 years anniversary of this festival. And I would like to thank Lydia Planetera for supporting that. The support that you gave us, Planetera helped our youth and the women uh, cooperatives to increase the traditional local made product. This is where we get the tourists to come like a week before. Those who are in conservation, community development, tourism, they come in. Then they start really buying all the products that are made by uh, the communities. Capacity building, training youth and women in cooperatives. We, we train them, we sat together, we collected their ideas. We said, we have been going into difficulties. So what else can we do from the training? So they came up with different initiatives. They said, why can't you engage us to be the guides? Now we are training, even though they don't speak the English, but they speak basic English, but still they have a translator on the side. Now they are turning up to be guides. So we are training them to be turn up to be a guide. So which is really good. Uh, the money has helped us. The funds has helped us uh, in terms of marketing. If we couldn't have organized this event in a good way and have the product, we couldn't have got people to come and buy the, the product from uh, Red Rocks. But they bought them. They bought all this product from the local communities and different social media outlets that um, you have been putting out contacting exhibition of the cultural artwork, which was included basket tables, mats, bamboo cups, and other art decorations were all around and being sold. So we would really like to thank Planetera to have really supported us into our uh, culture, tennis anniversary cultural tourism. And we hope maybe next year, uh, you will be able to be on the ground, then you can really witness how our event is being organized. The one we have next year, we will be able to share you. The program is already out and we would really like to see some of the Planetera members to come and see. Imagine if we can exchange with the Malawian people, Rwanda, and when we do really something like this, bringing us together, this is what Planetera is all about. And thanks very much for all your support and we would wish to keep on um, having more of this kind of collaboration, even in the future, uh, and other people will be following us as well. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you, Greg. I hope I can make it next year. Well, I will make it next year. I hope I can bring Julia and Selena with me as well, as well as some community partners. So many ideas going on there. Um, as, as you know, just to keep on, on track with time, and not take a lot of the time today. I think I have just a couple more questions. Um, one for Tamara, 
you know, you, we, we're so proud that the Echo Lodge is underway um, and you're really deep in um, developing this experience with your community. I'd love to know just your dream of what does success look like as you anticipate, you know, travel to, to come into your community. Um, what are your dreams for your community in terms of the Echo Lodge uh, moving forward? Thank you. Yeah. I've got big dreams. I've got big goals, lots of ideas. Um, but really what what the success looks like as we as we get close to opening, um, I want to involve more of the cultural kind of like what Greg's doing. Um, the area that we are in is really has a rich history and a rich cultural traditions around spiritual things. And we actually have a protected land that you see from the lodge and people are already really interested in that space and so um you know we we've been working with the community and we'll continue to figure out how they can really develop an experience for tourism for tourists to come and you know learn more about this area because it's it's unique it's really different and i and my hope is also that the community will start also having some pride in kind of their past and it's it's interesting now because like when you talk to a lot of people they don't find it to be as fascinating as you know when when tourists come in and so really working with them to sort of develop a way to show show that off um, because people are really interested in that um, we also have some environmental programs that we want to tackle and really like bring people together so sharing ideas kind of a lot of what greg said like greg's greg's doing a lot of things that i would like our our venture to be doing in the future too you know but um you know just really bringing people together and um figuring out how we can actually address you know our own issues as a community through tourism you know whether that's like through the financial things or even expertise you know people coming in that know how to do things and that they get really interested. We've already seen people when they come to our place, like um, one of my biggest goals is that people come and they, they're they like, wow, this place is incredible. Number one, because of the scenery, the village, the vibe of the people, the, the natural building, you know, there's a lot of different things we're trying to merge into one venture, but it's about people being able to feel that. It's a feeling um, and a lot of people already feel that. So, you know, also having, you know, getting to the place where the community can also feel how special that engagement is between each other um, and how we can we can use that to sort of bring our community forward in the way that, you know, th that we want, that they want, that, you know, it's very organic. So that's, that's my big, you know, my big dream, my big goals, and we'll get there. <laughs> Yes, I have no doubt you will. Thank you so much for that. Um, and before I hand it back um, to Selena and Julia, I just had one last, you know, parting thought or question for both of you. Um, as it has been shown throughout this whole discussion, you're both leaders that are, you know, driving community tourism and driving different communities. You know, just from hearing both of you speak, uh, Tamara, you are developing an experience. Greg, you have experiences that you know, you have developed with your community and continue to grow. And I'd love to hear from you, you know, what your hopes are as leaders from your community will continue to happen now that we are out of COVID, moving into 2023. I'd love to hear what ripple effects are you hoping to see from tourism from your work in the community? So just maybe one or two examples of what you're hoping to see in the coming year as a result of your tourism work. I think I'll start with Tamara. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I think really what I'm hoping to see um, come from tourism in our community is really, you know, on a short term impact, the infrastructure and being able to see, we're already seeing, you know, the benefits of having improved our road just a little bit, um, but really being able to bring water and power to our community is such a huge thing. Um, people have been dying for it. They've been begging, they've been wanting it. And I think letting them see that, you know, when we work together, that we can bring it, you know, in Malawi, we're, we're constantly just waiting, hoping the government does something, but um, it's very rare that that happens. And so, or, you know, even just kickstarting that process. So short term is that, but like, like you said, the ripple effects, I think, we're investing a lot in education in our community right now. And I think that's one of the biggest areas where we're gonna see um, growth is 
through our kids, through our students, you know, being able to get a better learning environment, a learning experience, and um, those long-term effects of having a more educated, you know, um, more opportunities for people, you know, just more ideas. And so I think, yeah, that's, that's my hope is that, you know, the community will also start to see, and I already know they really value education. It's not something that, you know, when I came into the community four years ago, it was about learning what is important to them and education is the top thing. So they already see the value of that. And so I think it'll be great when we can start seeing the effects of, of some of the hard work we're putting in. Amazing, thank you. And Greg? Uh, one of the things that I really would like also to see is the same find that uh, Thomas just mentioned. Um, I would like to see more local community being empowered into the community-based tourism, no matter where they are. Let it be next to the protected areas. Sometimes I just call them like, let them be also like some neglected villages. Those neglected villages can turn up to be a community, the best community uh, tourism sites if they are well managed and developed. So I would like to see them being developed and so that the tourists can really go there and we engage into, we engage the communities in what we are doing. We show them what we, uh, what we can offer to them and then uh, with the, our long-term partnership with Planetera, we put it on the wide right map, and we see who is going to buy what they have there, they have on the ground. So that's how I would like to to see it, without only thinking that, oh, this is the the community-based tourism should always be next to the protected areas or next to the sea or to the beach, but also to be in a, a place that is so nowhere. If we reach in a place and this village, there are no more people, how, what can we develop there? What kind of community-based tourism? How can we empower the people who are in that village to, to be a part of the community-based tourism? That's what I would really like to see. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and. Uh, I'm going to hand it back to Selena and Julia, but I wanted to thank both Tamara and Greg. It's always great when we have these chats with our community partners. I know we have quite a few of them on the side in the network, but it's always great when we can spotlight our partners and our community partners. So, you know, our supporters can know the amazing work that you're continuing to do and the hard work that you're doing in the communities. And we are so grateful to have, you know, not just you and Greg, but the other 448 plus communities all over the world who share the same sentiments you do. So I'm going to hand it over to Julia. And yeah, thanks everyone for listening. Um, and thank you, Tamara and Greg, for sharing with us today. So thank you, Evie. And Thanks again to Tamra and Greg for all of your insights and for sharing more about the, the great work you do. It's very, it was very inspiring to, to hear and I'm sure our audience thought the same. So from Planeterra, we want to continue supporting projects that are creating a positive impact like the Cove and Red Rocks. So before we jump into the Q&A section, if we have a few minutes left at the end, uh, I just wanted to share some different ways that you can help us continue with our work. And if you allow me just a second to share my screen again. So, ways that you can support Planetera over the next few months. Well, actually the next month, uh, but this one you can do always and it's an easy one. So help us spread the word on social media. So when you like, comment, or uh, you share one of our post then Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter, or you just share one of our YouTube videos, you're helping us spread the word and raise awareness about the importance of community tourism. And this means a lot to us. We can get more reach. So if you could do that, that would be very much appreciated. Next holiday, you can visit one of our projects. So by choosing to visit a community-owned enterprise, you're creating more impact than you can imagine. 
And for that, you can visit our website, planeterra.org, to learn more about some of the projects we support. Or you can also check the life-changing tours that our travel partners offer. Uh, you can check the G Adventures website. You can check Travelsphere or just you and just get familiar with the tours they have because they have integrated Planeterra projects into their, their great itineraries. And another way is to buy from our shop. We have a shop at Planeterra where you can get uh, different uh, t-shirts or sweaters or hoodies like the one I'm wearing. And it's a way to support our work because the proceeds from the shop go to, to towards Planetera's global pro program. So if you go to the website, you will find the shop, but here's the link just in case. And we were happy to announce today that you, we have a 15% off discount. And well, this is to, to go in the trend of Black Friday as well, but we also wanted to extend it from today towards next uh, Tuesday. So until the 29th, you can use the code IMPACT15 and get a 15% discount from the gear that you want to purchase. And for the last one, I'm going to hand it to, to Julia. She has a great announcement for us. You have a very uh, a very fun announcement. It was so great. I got I got caught up listening to all the the panelists. It was great to uh, to hear everyone. Um, I don't know if it's maybe paused on my end, but I the screen. There we go. Awesome. Um, so we do have a really exciting announcement. I'm super happy to share that today we're announcing Planetara's holiday wishlist campaign. It's officially launching next week, but we wanted to give our dedicated supporters like you the first glimpse and ask you to help us build momentum and get the ball rolling. This holiday season, Planetaire's wish list is dedicated to granting the wishes of our partners by investing in the power of community tourism enterprises. The power of community tourism enterprises to empower women, create new paths for youth, conserve culture and protect the environment, all while making sure that these enterprises have what they need to recover after years without an income and are not left behind as tourism restarts. Any contribution you can make is so appreciated, whether it's scanning the QR code here and donating early, or like Selena said, spreading the word about Planetera's latest and sharing our posts with your networks. Make sure to follow our social media so you can see the latest updates uh, with the wish list over the next month. We're really excited to continue sharing and spotlighting our partners over the coming weeks. With that being said, we'd like to open the floor. We have a few, it seems like we might have a minute or two. If there's any questions for our panelists that you'd like to ask, feel free to ask in the chat or uh, in the Q&A box. Well, it seems like that's everything. It was so great hearing from our community partners uh, at Red Rocks and The Cove from Tamara and Greg. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I, I honestly, I forgot that I was part of the webinar and I was just watching, listening to you guys speak the entire time. It was amazing to hear. Um, I love the work that you're all doing. I'm not sure if Selena or Evie have anything left to share, but we're so we're always so happy when we can connect our supporters and our community partners through webinars like these. Yeah, thanks, Julia. Oh, go ahead. I just wanted to say thank you. You guys were all saying these really great things, but it was really nice to have this opportunity, you know, to share what we're doing and just to feel, you know, to feel that connection to everybody who's also doing such amazing work in community tourism. So thanks for inviting us and having us. Thank you. I, I wanted to add as well to say it's so exciting when 
we do get to share our partners. I know we we sort of keep them to ourselves and, you know, we've got amazing stories like Tamara's and, and Greg. We hear them almost every day and, you know, we keep them to ourselves. It's always nice when we can share them with our supporters as well to say, hey, this is what our lovely community partners all over the world are doing. And it's always an honor, I mean, for me personally as well to hear um, our community partners, much like yourself, Tamara and Greg, share the hard work that you're all doing um, and the positives that are coming into communities as a result of tourism. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thanks for really for the great evening. Um, this is my first time to be on the panel plant here like this, but I, the more I get to learn from uh, what you are doing around the world, what you are doing, our other community members that are also connected to the network. It keeps uh, um, us inspiring us and it motivates us to do more than what we have what we have done. So I really hope that maybe one day we're gonna meet physically, maybe in Malawi, Zimbabwe, or in South America, and have more chats and discuss more. You know, demonstrate really physically on our culture not through the internet. Thanks very much. And uh, I wish everyone a happy uh, uh, listening and a, a good evening to everyone that joined us this evening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Greg and Tamra. Uh, like Julie and Evie mentioned, I was it's been super inspiring. And I just also wanted to take, uh, thank our audience for joining us today. Uh, we hope to share the recording of the webinar uh, soon, so stay tuned to that. And we'll, if there are no questions, I think uh, we'll just thank you again and, and, and hope you have a good evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye.